What's up guys? I'm Tiny Tiger. Welcome to my channel. So today's video we're going to be talking about Scylla's Cage. I know I've made uh, comments about it before where I wanted to make a video on how I put it together and built it. Uh, kind of forgot all about that and I actually got a recent comment about it. So I thought I would make the video today. So we're going to, want to take a look at it. And oh, before we do move on to that, for those of you that have been watching, I stated about getting a carpet python, and I got him. But they were, he was fed recently. You know, he was fed fed on a uh, live rats rather than frozen thawed. And that unless I can get him to switch over, I wouldn't be able to keep him. Um, that clip you guys saw in the beginning, that was like his most recent feeding. That's like his fifth feeding. So. Uh, of frozen thoughts. So there you go, guys. I'm keeping him. His name is Bagheera. Bagheera, the jungle carpet python. I'm so happy about that because I really love this guy. I love carpet pythons in general. They're one of my favorite snakes, along with bull snakes. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to get that out of the way. Let you guys know he's ours. So let's go ahead and move on to Scylla's cage. She's an Argentine black and white tegu, and she is a confirmed female. So she sits at about three, I think, 3.4 feet right now. She's about full grown. They don't get as large as males. Males definitely get a lot bigger. But uh, as the cage goes, this cage is six feet long, two and a half feet deep, and two feet high. The materials you need, you're going to need obviously a measuring tape, a powered screw dry, um, power drill by power drill with drill bits, and some screws. As far as the wood goes, I used, uh, I think this is half inch thick plywood. You can get it relatively cheap at Home Depot or Lowe's, and they can cut it for you. So I got my measurements out and went to Hope Depot, picked out the wood, and got them to cut the let's open it up so you guys can see. I'm sorry. Got them to cut six feet long, two feet high for the back end and the front end. So I got them to cut two pieces of that. Uh, also got them to cut two pieces of, what is that, I think that's two and a half feet long, two feet high. Got them to cut two pieces of that for the side, the side ends. And then, uh, I got them to cut two and a half, or two, six feet long, two and a half feet deep, uh, two pieces of that for the bottom and the top. And then, I, you also need a handsaw. At least I had to use a handsaw in order to cut the holes out to put for ventilation. And I also had to cut a hole up here in order to put the light system in there. Uh, when I got, I also, actually, also I forgot about that. I did use a hand, the handsaw to cut the front panel that, or the front wood to make, you know, this huge hole where I put the doors in. I think I cut it like I cut 18 inches off of it and left this six inch lip right here. What is it, six or seven inch? I don't remember. Oh, uh, she's she's got about eight inches of substrate in there. So this might actually be 16 inches I cut off. I can't quite remember, but um, I used. I'm pretty sure I used half inch no I used a uh, oh I use a full inch and a quarter screws to screw everything together pre-drill the holes that's I had to pre-drill the holes to make sure I don't ruin the wood or anything and when I put it together as a as the box itself first screwed everything together I also bought 
polycrylic, which is like a wood finish paint, I guess. I don't know what he, what you actually describe it as, but I would I painted over all the inside walls, bottom, top. Gave it about seven to eight coats, and I left it to dry out for about three days. The polycrylic will protect it from water damage, so I can mist as much as I want in here. And you also want to buy a sealant that is heat resistant. I sealed all the sides, the corners. Also used it as part of like a wood glue kind of thing. Bought vents to add into these sides here. Uh, let me see what else. Oh, and then uh, after I cut this front part off, I used some of the leftover wood to make this box right here. It's like a yeah, it's just a box really, and put it together. Put a piece of slate tile on top, and that's where she basks. It's pretty hot. It's like 124 degrees on this thing. As far as the the door goes, this one my my uh, I had to get my dad to help me put this together. What we did was, yeah, we got like a window frame. This is a window frame set sideways. We got some hinges and wood glue, glued it up and hinged it up together, right here as you can see. And we bought plexiglass or acrylic acrylic glass I think is what it is set it on the inside glued it in and we set it in these are also handles uh, these are I put these in myself these are just random handles I got I took off of an old cabinet that we were throwing away set it up in here these are some locks I put in. By the way, I don't live with my parents either. I mean, my parents are a couple towns away from me, so it's not too far to get my dad some help to help with this. He's a lot handier than I am. He taught me everything I know when it comes to computers and, and uh, building stuff like this. As for the light, we had to use a fuse box. Or I had to put a few fuse box in there, wired it up. You can buy one of these fixtures at Home Depot for like two dollars. Bought the cage for another five. Sorry, there you go. Bought the cage for another five. And it's on a switch. That's a wire you, you can also buy at Home Depot. Um. The UVB is a T5 fixture. It's about three feet long, I don't remember. And I think I got it from uh, Carolina Designer Dragons. They sell fixtures along with the mounting things you need, mounting supplies. You can see them mounted right there. I had to use a hand, a hand saw or drill to just poke a hole through there so it can slide the wire through these are I also set wheels on this cage I'm saying show you guys there you go yeah there's wheels down here over here and on that end so I can easily move it around if I need to never really had to yet but um, if the if I do have to, at least I have the wheels. Uh, this is just a piece of wood that I put along here. Gives her easy, like a step to go up and down if she needs when she needs to. Other than that, I think this was pretty simple to make. The difficult part really is doing the lights and doing the door. But everything else is just kind of screwing some wood together, making sure you seal it up, make sure you uh, apply some kind of protective layer on the wood, and then painting it if you want to. The paint was really just a choice here.
Yeah, it looks good though, right? I was thinking about setting up uh, another cage like this, but taller. It's going to be more of like an arboreal cage. I was thinking about doing that sometime over the summer, and I'll make a video on it if you guys are still interested in watching that. Maybe I'll get some kind of moderately sized monitor lizard. Who knows? Haven't really thought about it. Maybe an iguana. But uh, I think that's it. I don't think there's much really after that. Uh, other than that, guys, I have a room tour coming up here. I'll probably have it ready by next week. Repticon is right around the corner. Might be picking something up, might not. Who knows? I don't think I'm really interested in anything else except for maybe a boa species. I got my favorite python, my favorite colubrid. I don't have a boa yet, so. And I honestly, I don't really have a favorite boa either. I really just have pythons and colubrids are my favorite types of snakes. But, um,. Yeah, I'll have that winter tour out next week, guys, so, you know, stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Your support means a lot to me. I really love doing this, and uh, it's a passion. It really is a passion. So, I hope this video was helpful in any way. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and leave any comments, and I will try and answer them the best I can. Other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video.